Hello, everybody. We are live. And this is our new format today. You ask for <laughs> more playing, you're going to get more playing. Simon? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start, I, isn't it? It's like climatic there. Do you like that? Woo. Your turn. Oh, it, we're going that quickly with these riffs? Yeah, I, mate, I, straight I, I in. Like the entire song. I'm gonna get a cleaner sound for that next time. Go ahead. Uh, Go, next riff. <laughs> Simon thinks I'm not ready for a riff, but he's wrong. What do you think of that, huh? Keep going, Simon. Uh, yeah. You're up. <laughs> Nice. These magic hands are going to play another one for you. Simon, you're all oh, your tuning. Uh, I, I caught Simon tuning. I guess I'll have to go with another one. No, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Making me be a magician here. All right. All right. What do I have? How about. I'll play that better when I teach it. It's like, I just can't even hear it. You, Simon. All right. Uh, 
Now you have to come up with more Zeppelin songs here. This is going to be fun today, isn't it, Haymark? Yeah, we started with like 25, and as soon as we started playing, we dropped. Like people are just like, "Oh my gosh!" We thought they were just going to yap back and forth. They're actually playing their instruments. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so, uh, what are we going to do first, Mark? What do you want to do first? Well, let's teach. Let's see what the uh, let's see what the uh, peanut gallery wants. Who do we have on here tonight? We've got uh, movies and stuff, and Jeff and Sandra and Jake. Thank you all for being here. And did I miss people? I'm sure I did early. Cavalier Hawk. That's a cool name. Cavalier Hawk. Charles. Thank you, Robert. And hey. Johnny's always on. And of course, Tom. Thank you. And Tom's one of my students. And James is always good for showing up and supporting. All right. So everybody seems to be uh, excited That's for the fact that oh, ooh, 12 string. I got an ooh 12 string. Ooh, 12 string. It's good. It's good. Carl's there as well. All right. So the rain song nicely done. Thank you, Jake. Um, all right. Notice how I had to tune my guitar to like 19 different tunings, and they were 12 string guitars. Simon's got a six string. He can't even keep the damn thing in tune. All right. <laughs> Let's see what you got, Simon. I, you're up. It's a, it's a Gibson. Mark, I never up, Mark. tune. Carl, you're the um, you're the pro in this in this uh, in this bunch here. Show us how it's done. What do we got? What's first? Okay, so let's have a look at uh, Black Dog first, right? Black Dog. Let's look at Black Dog first. Has everybody got their guitar ready? Has everybody got their guitar ready? Oh, I better get mine. You got your guitar ready? Okay, so... Um... <laughs> Now, 
the trick with this song is that there's loads mm. of weird time signatures, right? So just the way it works in that first little section, we've got, we actually start on, um, in a bar of 6-4, because, you know, uh, and we start on the uh, five and a half. So you, uh, sorry, on the, yes, five and a half. So you get five and six and, and then it goes into a bar of four. So you've got, uh, so seven on the A string. Right? And then five and six on the D string. And then, right, and then seven, seven. And that's, uh, the bar now goes to four. Four, four, and that's one and. So we've got uh, and six and one and two and three and four. Okay, so let's have a look at that together. So we've got. All right, so seven, five, six, seven, five, five, seven. And there's a little bit of a. Right now, you know what? I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you real quickly. I'm really glad that Robert Plant sang this amazing vocal on it because if he didn't, there would possibly be the chance that I might have to do that in a cover band, and there's no freaking way that I would know how to count. How to get yeah, that's true. Tell me when to start, prod me in the back when it's time to start. <laughs> that's five. You're bending that from C to C sharp, right? And then resolving on A. So we've got. We move up a position, seven, nine. And then we've got a little triplet. So that fills the rest of that bar. So you've got. And. Whoops, you haven't got that. You've got six. Sorry. Five. Sorry, no, on the end. Five and six and one and two and three and four and. Make sense? My G string will not stay in tune today. You know, Literally, will not stay in tune. When I when I um got dropped out of engineering to become a music major, they told me that the you know the one nice thing is that I'd never have to count past four anymore. Now you're telling me well, I can't not true. Six, six. <laughs> we got. I think we got fives as well. Okay, so we've got that. And then we've got a triplet basically over the first beat of the, this is the second bar of this riff. Dead, dead, dead. Well, tell us, what, what is a triplet? How do we count a triplet, Simon? Let's talk so triplet. You can do a, lot, a whole bunch of things. Uh, if we've got a bar of four, we've got one, two, three, four, right? And what we're doing here is we're dividing this one into three. So it's going to be one, two, three. So one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, that kind of feel. Now, something that's really, really helpful is with the triplets um, to say them out loud. Get used to going one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Or if you want to put a word in there, like a three syllable word, like elephant, 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 or strawberry, 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 or whatever you like, right? So you've got strawberry, strawberry, right? So we've got and then two eights, two sevens on the D string. Right? So the whole thing so far, we've got seven. Five, six, seven. Bend, seven. Seven, nine, strawberry. Okay, and then we're going to do... Right? All good so far? I'm not checking the comments. People sort of following along. Uh, and then we've got... Okay, okay, now this bar is in five. So we've got one and two and three and four and one. Let's just show them the notes too. Show them all the notes there. Yeah, so we've got five, seven, seven, five, seven, three, five, eight, eight. And the opening is chromatic, right? Yeah. That's it. Right. Oh, there's two. There's two hits on the day there. One. Oh, sorry, my bad. Oh, I, um, I wasn't. I wasn't being passive aggressive. No, no, I, you're, 
me too. All right. No, you're quite right. Stick on, um, everybody. I'm going to give you something a lot easier than Simon's counting to six, 6.95. Yeah, it's here. pretty mental. It's a cool riff, though, right? So. And the other thing with this G, thanks, Jeff, for that. That's true, the string butler thing. It's just because they're old strings. And I'm a bit lazy in changing them, to be honest. Not me. I change like I every day I change at least one set, one guitar. They keep that like they're growing. They're I don't have any room to actually exist in this room anymore. The guitars are forcing me out. <laughs> all right. All right, I'll do an easy one here. How about um tangerine? Oh, good one. Tangerine. So we're gonna just start with an A minor chord. And we're gonna suss it. This way and then suss it this way, right? So, right, play this note right here the D, which is the fourth of A, the A sus four, and then the A sus two. And then G, and then D. And I think if you want to go note for note, I think he plays the D note that it's a yeah right does it again then to a C then we're gonna walk the C down so we do that C that B back to the A minor And we're going to go. That's the whole riff. And the chorus, I believe, is. It's. Tangerine. Tangerine. That's it, yeah. Just so it was. On the dream. So it just goes from G to C, and then it has a little quick D there before it goes back to the G. And that's pretty much, then there's that solo in the middle. I'm not really a big fan. There's two songs that I think would be a lot better. This is one of them. And um, and so uh, Over the Hills and Far Away, I feel Paige kind of meanders a little bit in the middle. The middle of both of those songs kind of remind me of police songs. You ever notice how in the middle of police songs, they're just like a, there's just like empty space all the time. Like they write this great song and they're like, okay, let's just fill it with a minute of crap. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. Maybe that's blasphemy. Jimmy yeah, Page is my number two guitar player of all time after George Harrison, though. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Of all times. Even back in the back in the days when there were loot groupies. Loopies. <laughs> so they called uh, groupies back in the uh, Middle Ages. They called them loopies because they were. Oh, of course, the loot. <laughs> um, so another riff. How are we going with the learning so far, everybody? Is this this is this good? Is, is it? Is it happening? Somebody wrote gasp. Yeah, or because gasp. I said I don't have a twelve string. I, I know. Well, that's a good one. Do that one. This is a cool one, right? So we're going to start off with two E's. Right. So we've got. Basically, play a D chord, A shaped bar chord, or you can play like that, and then an E shaped bar chord, and then back to a D shaped bar chord, a D chord. So I not, a, not, really not a D like shape. No, don't confuse them. An A shape. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired. I've had to watch a lot of soccer the last few weeks. It's uh, it's Push hard me to keep football? up with it. Well, you know, I was just translating. Football. See, I'm I'm multilingual. You are, yeah, football. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I was up this morning at six o'clock watching the plucky Aussies getting beaten by the Argentinians. So I have a question. You know, they call it football, like F U T football. So is this my yeah. foot? Is this my foot? In in in, foot? Uh, in Spanish, it is your foot. It's I think my yeah, foot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. I actually, uh, I'm actually going to the foot doctor on Monday. Oh, getting, yeah. I need some doctor. some new shoes. Yeah. Ah, you know. Yeah, I am gonna. I didn't put Freywinds in though. Movies and stuff. I, I'm putting. Uh, I put something else in. 
I'll, I'll show you that at the end oh, of the exciting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's how that one goes. Um, somebody asked about the guitar sounds as well. All I've got is the guitar going into a Wampler dual fusion. And I'm using that really as just an amp pusher, not as a distortion or overdrive. And then I've got going into, I bought a, this really cheap Marshall tube amp called a Marshall Origin 20. Um, it's been amazing. It cost me, I bought it secondhand for $300. And then that goes into this thing called a Two Notes Captor X, which is like a, an attenuator. So it doesn't have to be 8 million decibels in here. And then I send that to the internet. And that's what you can hear. It's really cool. It's a sound, right? So, um, yes, so the soccer, it's, it's been brutal, man. Living in Australia and following soccer is, is it's not easy. Why, anyway. because, why, cause the, cause the national team isn't very good, you mean, or? No, because the games are on a ridiculous o'clock. You know, I'll tell you, so how many people out there thought the name of the, the country that's hosting it? I thought the name of the country was Qatar. For years, I called it Qatar. Now, now it's Qatar. Qatar. And, and what about Kiev? Oh, yeah, Kiev, right? Yeah. Yeah, I called it Kiev for years. Now it's, now it's Kiev, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't... Yeah, Jeff, it is quite plexi-like. It's a pretty cool sound. Uh, and for not very much money. It's a killer guitar sound. Um, I think a lot of these sort of shoebox amps or whatever you want to call them, these tiny amps like I've got an Ibanez one there, which is more like a Fender sort of situation. And I've got a, another one just down the bottom there, which is more like a, uh, it's like a sort of uh, a Princeton blackface kind of thing. But they're, they're copies of, of the expensive ones. And honestly, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I'm going to say the lunchbox amp is a, is a great thing. Um, all right, yes, so that is how that riff in. Hey. So, so um, movies and stuff, At says he's planning on putting Frey in his Strat, and it is attractive. Those of you that are thinking about swapping out pickups, the problem with the Frey is you can't return them. Um, I don't, I don't know the pickups, it, you know, you can, it's cool. Cause you can choose on the menu, all these different options and the wiring and stuff. And it's $385, which is, it's expensive, but it's not really a whole lot more expensive than most of the other, uh, you know, drop in pickup systems. But I found a really good deal on, um, Fender, uh, 57 to 62 twos. I haven't put them in yet because I'm going to make a video on it. And because that video is later in my, you know, in my thing, I've had to wait. It sucks, but I don't want to put them in, play it, then have to pull them out and, you know, to make the video, pretend that I'm taking it. You know what I mean? So anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to show you um, the uh, little bit of the uh, Stairway to Heaven solo because it's, uh, it's a fairly easy solo. Those of you that uh, play, play the electric. Um, if you know your minor pentatonic scale, your first position minor pentatonic, which probably most of you know. Also the fifth position of the C major pentatonic, just to confuse you a little bit, if you weren't confused. Yeah. So you're going to bend. Then you're going to walk down. Right down the scale. You're gonna backtrack just one. Don't don't you have to do the face though? On oh, the bend? Can I do the face? Do the face. Maybe like a <laughs> Yeah. So the, the the last note, the note he resolves on is the only one that is not in the minor pentatonic. And it's slowly it's Some people like to go down here, but Pace like says that he plays it there. 
Now, the next part is a little more about the timing on it, but we're not going to count here. We're not going to count the seven or the end of six or anything like that. We're just going to keep going. That yeah. happy. So after the, you know, we're going to go, we're going to bend again. Whole step bend on the second string, eighth fret. All right, got that? Yeah. And then bend the first string. Five. Right, then there's a little, he actually plays the same note in two different locations on that next part. And then he goes. Now we're up in the, um, in the eighth position. And again, he goes out for one note. He goes out of the, uh, the scale. So the whole thing to that point. Now the next two phrases are really just kind of looping around the minor pentatonic. That's all for tonight on that. You guys can rewind it. If you want to learn the solo, I'll, um, I'll go through it with you. Just uh, shoot me an email and, um, and I'll work you through it. It's a, it's a fairly easy solo. I mean, it's some parts are a little bit fast, but uh, it's a good solo. If you're, if you've been playing for, you know, six months, it's a good solo to learn how to bend and tune on, you know, yeah, the mark, of a, the mark of, a, of a player that's paying attention is somebody that, you know, make sure they complete their bends, you know? You don't want to be yeah. somewhere there. Yeah, I love the, the way it feels when you move it down to the... I know it doesn't really do that, but... It's very, very satisfactory. Excellent. Right. What do you Riff. Got? Heartbreaker. Simon. Heartbreaker, yeah, nice. Heartbreaker, I think it actually is like... So we're just basically in an A minor pentatonic lick, really. So we start on G, we're gonna bend that quarter, and then we go A, C, D, D sharp, E, right? So it goes three, zero, three, one, uh, open, one, two, and. And then we've got semiquavers, so one E and a two. Super easy riff to play, right? So, awesome. But I quite like to play it. I don't know. A little easier like. to control, right? Yeah. We all like to yeah, play. I don't know. But then, uh, then it goes up, right? And it plays exactly the same thing, but just two frets up. magic of the of the um whole lot of love riff what's the little trick to get that that cool little little uh, sound that page gets that, you know? um the, yeah there's some kind of weird timing and stuff in there, in there um whole lot of love whole lot of love whole lot of love it's the it's the open fourth string right with the bend isn't it doesn't he go isn't he bending the is, isn't he bending the uh, fifth string and also playing the fourth string open? Oh, I don't know. I literally don't know. <laughs> All right, there you go. I didn't know yeah. that. I, I, I just find that that one's good because it's really like it's quick, right? <laughs> Not easy to do that little part though. You got to really be because if you're bending, you either have to bend up 
or you have yeah. to bend down and just be careful you don't crowd that fourth string. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, so then. So I've always just always gone down there. That sounds fine too. I, I think he only does that on the record. I don't think he does it live. You know, oh, when he's, he's like, not, not the part I'm talking about. I'm talking about this, this bend right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This bend, he bends the note and he plays the fourth string open. Yeah, yeah, right. That's really nice. I like it. So, you know, you got to just do it a little bit, like a quarter step there. All right, am I up? Do I have to come up with one now? Oh, I think that you just came up with one, didn't you? Yeah, hold go ahead. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah, your turn. Yeah, hold on to love. Your turn. Uh, hold on to love. How about... Um, how about... How about... Oh, yeah, yeah. What about, what about, what about hold on, Simon. While we're waiting, how about this one? <laughs> All right, back to you, Simon. <laughs> oh, the, the solo to A Whole Lot of Love. Right? Yeah, it's a good so, one. So uh, you basically have one guitar that just plays E-E. <laughs> -E. That's, that's the easy bit. Right, right and then what we're going to do is we are going to play, it's any minor pentatonic, like everything, you know, pentatonic, pentatonic, pentatonic. We're going to go bend the uh, A to a B for the classic. And then we're going to go. Right, so. How's that? Sounds good. Sounds it's cool, great. Isn't it? That's a worthwhile learn, that one. Can't do it in time, but. Yeah, that's 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 a cool little thing, isn't it? What yeah, I love that riff. Uh, that's a good one there, right? Is that a step and a half or six two steps? It's a long way to Tipperary, my friend. I've got. I think I've. I seem to remember it's two and a half. Is that two and a half steps? Yeah. No, that probably wasn't two and a half steps, but. Give auto, give an auto one, or are you, are you, are you pedaling? No, I, I'm a wah wah. I'm using the wah wah. Sorry, You're using yeah, the yeah. wah wah. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. That my absolute favorite thing, the wah wah. The wah wah. Wah wah. The song wah wah by uh, George Harrison. Yeah, yeah, I love the wah. I just think it's awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give everybody a little, little slide 101 lesson here, okay? So if you want to play slide, your best bet is to start – I mean, if you want to start playing slide, a couple things. One is you definitely don't want to do it on a 12-string. Um, I wouldn't recommend starting on a 12-string. And you want to – if whatever guitar you have that has the highest action is, is the preferable guitar. That way you're not yeah. fretting out. And uh, the biggest mistake people make is not – muting the strings behind the slide. So eventually you want to work to getting the slide on your pinky hand. It may feel awkward at first. So you can start with it on your ring finger until you get more control. The advantage of having it on your pinky is that you can play chords and do other things and still have the slide ready to go. When you're playing Leo Kotke songs, you have to play with your, on your pinky there. Um, but you have to mute the strings behind the uh, the slide. Otherwise, you get all kinds of crazy notes ringing out. So, if I don't mute the strings, I get this. Okay. And if you play um, if you play in an open tuning, ideally you're going to be able to play straight across. This is really easy. Once you tune it up to um, it's D. Was it Dad Got No? It's uh, D G D C B D. 
So double double drop detuning with a with a with a G down too is so. And you just uh, go to the 12th fret. Try to get your your hand to. If you can get that one, then you're gonna go to the third fret. Open third fret, fifth fret, third fret, open. You want to practice getting your, your pitch. You want to be accurate there. Uh, you want to try to. And then after that, it's just if you want to play this, this song, you actually just, you're going to go fourth string, third fret. Uh, I think it's a four, three, two. It's a. Yeah, it's four, three, two on the third fret, second fret. Open, right? Then the fifth fret of the um, fifth string. So it's. And that last one is just a slide from the third fret to the fourth fret. So that's a really good song if you want to try playing slide. It's a really good song to uh, to start with. Just uh, remember to mute the strings behind the um, behind the uh, slide. If you can shake it a little bit, if you're getting nervous, um, if you're maybe if you're withdrawing from alcohol or uh, you drink too much caffeine, you'll get a nice little. That's good. I like it. All right. That's Simon. All right. Now, uh, my turn, right? Yeah. Let's go. Right. Well, first up, you need to tune your guitar. So you need D. D. Why? Why no volume? I think I've broken something. Okay. So D, A, D, G, A, D. And what we're going to do, we're going to play this. We're going to put your first finger here on uh, the second fret of the G string. Right, so we've got... Oh, cashmere! One E N. Right, so we've got... Open G. One e and two. Okay. Now, what's cool is that this finger stays here the whole time, so you can kind of do this... Um, that kind of thing, right? So you've got Okay, so what you might have seen there is I came up to the five and five, so there's five, two, then three, three, three. Four, four, four. And then a switch around just there. So you get this. Uh, and the last thing you do is play um, octave. D, D, D. So you're basically going A, D flat. Keep going. Up. Right, with the thing. So you've got. Whoops. And then it loops around, so you get this um, uh, and a four and, so you get and a four and, and then you, it loops around immediately at the beginning of the sort of, uh, on two and a half, which is really kind of weird, so that... And then you kick off again. Now, so that is a cool riff. And then the other bit which I really, really like is the, um, is it bridge? Is that a bridge? I don't know. The bit that goes like. So you're playing the same figure every single time. So put your third finger here on 12, your uh, second finger here on 12 on the 
G and E strings. Oh, it's the third and first strings because they're tuned, obviously. So you're just going to play, and then your first finger comes in behind, plays F sharp, 11, right? So you're going to get, and then you do the same thing, and then the same thing at 7, same thing at 5, same thing at 3, and then you play F, D, or 3, 2, 0 on the D string. So you get this. Right? And then it returns. It doesn't start at the two and five, it starts at the three and five. So you get this uh loud down 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 da da da. Um, uh, somebody somebody wrote me and asked me if I thought that the, if the Tin Man could play guitar. So I really didn't know what to do. So I put a slide on every finger, like the Tin Man, right? He's got metal hands, right? So let's see what happens when you try to play guitar. With <laughs> slides on all your fingers. What could go wrong? What yeah? What could go wrong here? And I can't even now. I can't get my darn freaking guitar. I should probably crank up the. Uh, distortion for this one i don't know figures it's it like it knows it senses that it's going to sound like crap so it uh here we'll just do it without any any sound i mean ultimately you're just going to get the last right the last slide but what happens if you try to mute the other strings with slides behind the slide you're hurting my you're hurting my time right? listen listen I think you've just invented a new kind of guitar playing, mate. That's yes, epic. yes. I have seven slides. I don't even play slide, and I have seven slides. That's a lot of slides I, for somebody. It's a lot of slides slide. for for the non-slider. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. It's you know every once in a while I I, I love um uh, Derek Trucks. You know I, you guys have heard me go on and on about how I think he's the the you know even though it's he's a king. uniqueness yeah. his style is is unparalleled I think. Um, Every once in a while, I'll, I'll hear him. I'll be like, oh, you know what? I could do that. And I go and I pick up the slide for two seconds and it sounds like shit. And oh, can I say that? Um, and it, it sounds like shit. And, um, you know, it's a, cat's out of the bag now. And uh, then I stop playing again for another six months or so until I've got to play Traveling Riverside Blues. That's an easy one. <laughs> I think I can play Freebird too. I, I forget how it goes, but I'm pretty sure I can play. What else can I play slide on? You know, I learned slide on, uh, what's it called? On um, the the, the um, Leo Kaki song. That took me a long time to learn that uh, Vaseline Machine Gun, you've got to, you need to have finger picks on, you need to have a slide, you know, a half slide. He's going a million miles an hour, pain in the ass, but I was able to capture it in video. It's and true. It happened. I have to play it again. I had to buy I had to buy separate strings, twelve separate strings for that in order to get because he plays in a it's in drop B flat tuning, so everything what? is so low. I mean, if you try to put regular strings on, they're like you know they're falling off the guitar. So all right, let's do a little trivia and then wrap it up here. I got to make some dinner. Yeah, yeah. So let's see what we got. We'll do um. We so, have, can we ask first before we do the trivia? What do we think of that? What do we think of doing that kind of lessony play some riffs? show you how to play them kind of situation? Or would you rather just we go back to our regular thing where we kind of just just have a bit of a chat about something? I don't know. Because really, we make it for you, right? So it's you've got to tell us what you like. You mean you mean you guys make it for me, right? Is that what you mean? Oh, what do you mean for yeah, them? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly, Mark. So exactly. Jeff says he learned Crossroad Blues Robert Johnson, the first slide thing. That's a very complex slide. That's good. You must be an excellent slide player, Jeff. Um, how many of you, when you first heard about Robert Johnson – um, if you're like me, you, there were no Robert Johnson records available. It was out of print back in the eighties. And you heard about this legend, Robert Johnson. And I just expect him, expected him to have this like 
big booming right. voice, you know, went down to the crossroads, right? And then, you know, he's got, the, I went to the crossroads, found out. You know, I, I just did not expect that. And nothing wrong with it, but uh, anybody else? Anybody with me there? Or did everybody yeah, else? yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with I have you. two slides and 13 guitars. Oh, it's a lot, it's a lot of slides, isn't it? Two slides, two slides is enough for 13 guitars. I mean, I, you know, I have, I wonder, wait, let's figure this out. That person has two slides for 13 guitars. So they have one slide for every six and a half guitars. I wonder mm -hmm. if they, if I have a higher or lower ratio than that. I think, I think I do. I think I have a lower ratio. I don't, there's no way I have 40 guitars. Uh, yeah, I see, I have one slide. How many guitars do you have, Simon? Well, I just sold one this morning. So now I have two, four, six, eight, nine guitars. You have nine guitars. How many basses do you have? One. Nine guitars, one bass. And how many, um, do you count like your classical? Do you have like a, a ukulele or something? No, those are only designed for the fire, my friend. They're designed for the fire? Yeah. But apparently those of you that see my video tomorrow, ask yourself now, by the way, video at noon tomorrow, ask yourself now, mandolin, do you have a mandolin, Simon? No. Anyway, ask yourself now, do you think there are more Bass ukulelists, I just made that word up. If you play ukulele, you're a ukulelist. Are there more bass ukulelists in the world or 12-string guitar players? Because according to Sweetwater, there are more bass ukulelists. Ukulele. Not even just not even just plain old ukulelists, bass yeah. ukulelists. Just, I mean, if you're playing a ukulele band, do they really need somebody to like lay the bass line down or what? <laughs> you know? Oh, my being. Like what are what are the drums like? Are they like the little uh, you know canastas or something? You know for, for the uh, can what song? All right, there's my first um, first um, or no no um, name a song that has the word castanet in it. So only one trivia question tonight. That's it. Name name a song that has the word castanet in it. Hmm. I know I know a song. That's why I thought of it. Obviously, it's my question. Anybody well, know the song that has the word castanet in it? It also has fuming incense stencher in it. To where she hung a castanet. Oh. She was breeding a dwarf, but it wasn't done yet. She had that Camarillo brio. Out along her head. I know the Mendocino Bino. You don't know? Camarillo. Uh, it's, nobody got it. It's Camarillo Brio by uh, Frank Zappa. It's a great song if you oh. don't know it. We'll do another one, though. We'll, I want to give the 20 bucks away, so we'll do one more. You get. You give it, Um, you, you give, uh, Simon, go ahead. A question I can't. My brain's, I'm, my, I'm fried. Absolutely fried. All I have right. no question. You're the question. You are the king of questions. I have lots of questions. All right. You have the castanet fumes, right? Right past the fuming incense stench to where she hung her castanets. All right. I, how about th I, can't, I can't ask that one because uh, that's the question to win a, win a prize. All right. How about – does anybody know the song? So who here – I'm sure a lot of you know the um, Professor of Rock. Um, Stu Sutcliffe. Come on. Or are you talking about Pete uh, – What's his name? Pete Shodden. Is that what you're talking about? You going back real old school there for me, Jeff? You don't 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 try to drop any Beatle questions on me. Come on now. Before Stu, there was Pete Shotten, right? And the quarrymen. All right. So um what was like? Oh, so there's a song that the professor of rock did. Um, the question Moody Blues. Um, and it's about this song that apparently in 1971 hit like number 23 on the charts. And it's a song about like a plane crash. And the guy talks about like the blood dripping from the guy's head. It's, uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but it's like some crazy song. I, I have no idea how this song actually like charted, but, um, the pref <laughs> anyway, I can't, I wish I could describe it more. Is there a question? It's not really a question. I was wondering if anybody knows that, knows that song. All right, I'll ask a question now. How about kind of clickbaity for my what's kind of clickbaity? What knights in white satin? Um, all right, how about this? Here's the question. What is the last word in the spoken section of Knights in White Satin? Oh, I like it. 
What is the last word in the spoken section of uh, DOA by Bloodrock, Mark Bishop? Yes, thank you. That's it, DOA. It's a ridiculous song. Oh, Tom got it first. Tom, thank you, Tom. Tom knows. Yeah, Tom's in. All right. Going once. Going twice. Going twice. Illusion. You lost that one. Let's do another one. Oh. Is you the last word? Isn't it illusion? What is an illusion? Uh, no, no, no. All right. Um, all right. What's next? How about... Um, ba, 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 ba. All right. Let's do another Moody Blues question. Okay. Who is the original leader of the Moody Blues before Justin Hayward and, uh, and John Lodge hijacked the band? That's an easy one. Come on. An easy one. Easy one. And what was their big hit? Anybody? Not Peter Green. No. Peter Green was Fleetwood Mac. Mm. All right. The answer is Benny Lane was the original. Go Now was a hit. They were like a Britpop band. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And then John Lodge and uh, yeah. Femi Lane. Femi Lane. Uh oh. Femi Lane. Will. You know, Will. I don't think Will has won anything. I don't know if I know Will, but I'm going to. I'm gonna give it to you, Will. Three dollars, Will. Right? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Somebody, somebody requested this. Oh. Not missing a thing. There we go. Not missing a thing. Watching the full moon cross in the rain. And I'm a riding the storm out. Riding the storm out. Riding the storm out. Lady of the South. Not missing a thing. All right, that's it. We left you Ciao, everyone. the speed wagon. Everybody, have a good night. We'll see you in two weeks. Early REO. Yeah, early. That's right. Who was the original singer on that? That would have, that should have been the question. Uh, um, Kevin Cronin was not the original week. singer on that, and we'll do that for next week. All right. Will, if you're still on, email me, please, so I can get you that $20 gift card to Amazon. Everybody be safe, and we will, will we see them before Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Of course we will. All right. We'll see you in two weeks, everybody. Good night. See ya. Bye. Thank you all very much for your time. Bye-bye. Yeah.